I think the first pick the brains of these folks on, on what Chad just pointed out here and what the possibilities are for Team Trump. Hadley Manning is here, Jonathan Honig, and uh, John Layfield. Uh, John Layfield, ended with you, begin with you on how the Republicans sort of finesse this by not finessing it, by getting this stuff out of the way and then charging ahead with these big tax cuts, with the big regulatory relief, uh, but all in a sort of a grand slam right up top to let people know this is what we're doing. Yeah, and, and the problem that you have is President Obama did this with Obamacare, and he created such ill feelings that nobody worked with him for the next six to seven years of his term. And I think President-elect uh, Trump could do this exact same thing here by shutting down Obamacare when he has this majority right now. If you do something as you're working with the economy, the tax cuts, reforming the tax code, doing something with immigration, I think that is something that could be a bipartisan issue. The Obamacare is probably going to be 100 percent a partisan issue. That's going to be tough to put through first because it's going to shut down the government like it did for President Obama. Uh, right. I mean, you get because you have the majorities uh, and you can force your way, uh, if I remember correctly, with the, the Affordable Care Act, um, not a single Republican vote, and it, it came back to bite him. So how does a President Trump avoid that, or does he worry about that? Hadley, can you hear me? So there, there, so, yes, so there's going to be a lot of uncertainty related to policy making in the first couple of years, especially considering that President elect Trump is not your traditional Republican and he's coming with his own priorities and plans for how to reform health care, for example, or tax reform. But he's going to work with uh, the Republicans in Congress. And long term, we have to recognize that some of these reforms will actually be very good for the country, very good for the economy, very good for the pocketbooks of the millions of Americans who have faced premium increases, doubling and tripling. So Americans are expecting that because he was elected to the White House and because Republicans were elected to majorities in both Congress and, and the Senate, that they will act on those items. So it's an expectation at this point. You know, I, and, and I could and, be missing something, Jonathan. I think the single most important issue right now is, is goosing this economy and providing immediate tax relief. Um, now, it doesn't have to be in the shape and the form that Donald Trump outlined, but, but something that can have instant results, get people spending that money because they're not doing it to the degree they should, certainly at this stage of a, of a recovery. Now, there are other issues. I'm not dismissing them. I just think that strikes me as the most important, but it's also the most problematic, isn't it? Well, you know, taxes are important and tax cuts are great. You just can't look at them out of context of an entire economy and government's role in the economy. I mean, Adley, I think, really hit the nail on the head. You have to look long term as to what the policies enacted by President-elect Trump, and we don't know what a lot of those policies are going to be. You know, and you just can't look at the markets, Neil. The stock market was up 200 percent under Roosevelt, but he enacted so many of the policies that have haunted our economy for years. Or, you know, the first George Bush, the market was down under his presidency, but he deregulated the, under the, a lot of the economy that benefited under Clinton. So you have to look long term. You so have there, to think no, in that's principles. A very good perspective. And right now, George Bush is, or uh, Trump is a question mark. All right. Um, I know you were not for him in the, in, in the election, but John Layfield, one of the things that also comes up is you talk about bipartisanship and all of that. There, uh, I, unless something miraculous has happened, I don't see that issue changing where it's all one party's way or no way. Uh, that was the first two years with Democrats with Barack Obama. I suspect it will be the same no matter how much Donald Trump tries uh, with Republicans and a President Trump. So uh, how potentially damaging could that be or you know we've we've learned that you know you get a lot done in those first two years uh it can carry you through a term and maybe a second term Absolutely. Look, if uh, Donald Trump is able as President Trump to get the economy moving, uh, you'll have Democrats start hopping on board with this because once people start, people vote with their wallets and the Democrats want to get reelected as well. And if the economy is moving, then, then it's going to be something that is going to be a bipartisan issue. Look, you have tax cuts, big tax cuts and infrastructure spending. Now, it's not paid for. That's a separate issue. But you have that going <laughs> forward. That is going to significantly help uh, the economy. The worrisome part is the trade issues going Going forward, but right now the uh, stock market is looking at this. And remember, now the financials have been under so much pressure. Once you take Elizabeth Warren out of the equation, the financials have really rallied because you're probably going to have Dodd Frank rescinded or at least fixed in some respect. And if you're able to replace Obamacare with something that is feasible and something that works and the premiums don't go up, I think you're going to have a lot of bipartisanship behind President Trump if that happens. All right, guys, we're just finding out, I'm cutting this short. I apologize for breaking news here, but we're